Hey what's up guys, my name is Echerno and welcome to the third episode of my Flappy Bird series. Today we'll be initializing OpenGL for the game and making sure that we're using the right version. Inside our project, in the main class, we create the display. As soon as that's done, we need to set up OpenGL. There's quite a lot to set up in the future, but most of it can't be done just yet, since our game is only a few lines of code. Right after we create the display, let's run a method called init, which stands for initialize, which we'll use to initialize our game. Let's make the init method just below start. We'll make it private since no other class should access it. The first thing we should do is check that OpenGL was successfully configured when we created the display, and that the right version was given. To do that, we'll need to call an OpenGL method that resides in OpenGL 1.1. In LWJGL, all OpenGL methods and constants are static, which means we don't need to create an object to use OpenGL. We simply call a static method or constant. Since the method we want is an OpenGL 1.1, the method is located in the GL11 class, so we'll need to type in gl11.glgetString and then gl11.glVersion. This will request the GL version string from OpenGL, so let's set that to a string of our own called version. This is fine, but personally I hate seeing the GL11 everywhere, especially since later on we'll be using all sorts of OpenGL versions prefixed to every piece of OpenGL code we'll type. Fortunately, there's a way we can remove them. Let's scroll up to the top where we imported GL11. Instead of just importing it, I'm going to write import static, which means that Java will import a specific static method that we want from that class. Now at the end of the line, we need to specify which method or constant we want to import. I'm going to go ahead and type in dot asterisk to import every static method and constant there is in the GL11 class. Then I'll move that line up to the top to keep our imports more organized by simply holding down the alt key and using the up arrow key. Now if we scroll back down to our init method, we can remove the GL11s from this line. There we go, much cleaner. Let's go ahead and print out the version to the console and make sure it's the one we requested. Now let's run the game. As you can see in the console, we're running OpenGL 3.3. Great, that's exactly what we wanted. If you see a version below that, and you've got the same context attributes code that I have, you've got a problem. Please leave a comment below, or make a post to my forums at thechannel.com so I can help you out. Back in our init method, let's set the clear color to white. The clear color is the color that our window will be cleared to every time we decide to clear the screen. We can set it to white by typing in GL clear color, followed by four 1.0Fs. This will set the clear color as RGBA, red, green, blue, alpha, to max, which is white. Colors in OpenGL are generally expressed as floats and range from 0.0, .0 to 1.0. The Fs you see here might look a bit foreign. They simply mean that the number we typed in is a float. If we leave out the F, Java thinks the number is a double and we get an error. By appending an F, either lowercase or uppercase to the end, we're converting it into a float. Now let's create a render method just below our run method. Inside we'll simply clear our screen, particularly the color, by calling glclear, glColorBufferBit. This should clear our screen to the clear color we set, which is white. We'll call this render method every frame, so let's call it just above display.update in our run method, and run our game. Great, we've got a white screen. OpenGL 3.3 is ready to use. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like. Next episode is going to be the brilliant maths episode. OpenGL requires us to use a lot of vector and matrix maths, which we're going to write ourselves from scratch. Get ready. Goodbye.